Hey, Kevin. What's up, Chuck? Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing good. Good to see you. Good man. morning. Hi, Dana. Uh, I I know this. I don't know this wife. <laughs> This is, this is Kyla. This is my wife. Kyla. Okay. Uh, Kyla, I probably met you one time when we were at your house. So. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of people there, so that's, that's easy. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for taking the time with us this morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's great being with you. This is awesome. I want to say I want to say thanks for that little tool that you and Carter uh, did with the gen mapping. That is a huge time saver, bro. Huge. Hey, all we did was put it out there. We we told the guys what we wanted. They built it, so they did all the hard work. Wow, I'm so thankful, man. Thanks oh. for showing us how to use it, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's true. The very next day, I, I finally updated my gen map, which I haven't done since I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> well now, now that's a good day. sign that's a very good sign so all right well uh whoever is leading you just tell me what and, or when to go and then oh right right now it's all okay. you we just want right whatever now. encouraging word you want to give yes uh somebody turn in your bible to first Thess chapter Chapter one. What was that scripture again? First Thessalonians chapter one. Okay. And one person read verses two and four, and another person reads seven and the eight. So two, three. Two, three, four. Uh let's see here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor, of love and steadfastness, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Okay, and seven and eight. It says, and so you became a model to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, the Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. All right. Uh, I didn't have you read five and six because that belongs to Troy and Rachel. So I'm not going <laughs> to steal any of their thunder there. But uh, mm -hmm. I certainly feel this way about you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the gratitude that I have for you uh, as co-laborers in Christ, a uh, great example. I wrote down five things that I appreciate about you all. And so the five things are, number one, I appreciate your leader, Troy Cooper and Rachel. Um they inspire me, encourage me, exhort me. I don't think I've been rebuked yet, but I received that gladly. And so you, you all are really blessed to have Troy and Rachel with you. I, I feel such a comradeship with them uh, in the fight, the good fight. It's just, it's good to be a part of the family, you know, so you are family. And I appreciate your labor in the gospel. I, I don't know of too many places around the United States where the gospel is such a high priority in people's individual lives and the life of the church. You know, the church is in the harvest. And so that's number two. Uh, you guys are having a global impact. 
and I I was just I'm probably gonna miss some countries, but I was kind of listing them off this morning: England, Grenada, Peru, Canada, Haiti, Ecuador, Mexico, Japan, and I. Properly miss them, and so South Florida is having a global impact. And so your love for the gospel, your love for the nations, really speaks to your apostolic unction. You you guys have a fire in your bones to get the gospel out to make Jesus's name famous everywhere. And that's very inspiring to me personally. And then uh, you're having this huge impact in the United States as well. Uh, I can't even begin to name the places where you've been, but also the, the ripple effect that South Florida is having on the nation that you don't even know about. There, there are people, uh, somebody was saying, yeah, they, uh, this happened the other day. Yeah, they know about No Place Left and Troy Cooper and South Florida. They don't know what you're doing, but they've heard about No Place Left. And, and what they heard was what was happening in South Florida. So you don't even know those people. The ripple up fact that God is doing through you is uh, amazing and we probably won't even know until we get to heaven if, if that's even important to us when we get there but it it's having a huge impact in just our country and then uh, I appreciate your love for the bride whether it's a legacy church or the church on the street, it doesn't matter. You all are going to love the bride of Christ, and you're going to pour your lives out for her. And you, you all are an exemplary example of that kind of love. So uh, lastly, I just want to say I appreciate your love for Jesus himself that's the most important and that's it's extremely evident by your work ethic by your convictions by the way that you live your life by the way that you love people um, it, we know when we see your lives and watch you individually and corporately as a church we know that you love Jesus, and that's, uh, that's the highest compliment of all. Now, I know the alarms went off at 10.02, and I did not stop, so less, <laughs> less we err, you know, <laughs> go astray. Uh, Tom, why don't you pray for labor right now? Absolutely. Uh, Father God, thank you so much. Uh, for being the Lord of the harvest. Uh, God, we ask that you would just uh, send out more workers today into your harvest field because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Uh, so, Lord, burden the hearts of your children today uh, to go out and make disciples and expand your kingdom and to serve you on this mission that you've called us all to. Do this, God, for your glory and your name's sake. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the things that I appreciate about you all is Troy and Rachel, your leaders, your labor in the gospel, your global impact, your national impact, the way you love the bride and the way you love Jesus. And so now what I want to do is I want to spur you on to excel still more. I want to give you an assignment, so to speak. Okay. So uh, somebody read First Thessalonians four one. First Thessalonians four verse one. Yeah. 
Uh, finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Good. In New American Standard, that last phrase is excel still more. Now, when I say excel still more to some people, their shoulders kind of drop and they they have this sigh like, I can't work any harder, you know? And that's not what I'm talking about. When I think of Excel still more, I know that you all are giving it your all. But the way that we can excel still more is by pouring our life into other people to multiply our efforts in the gospel, disciple making, church planning, leadership development. So when I say excel, excel still more, I'm not saying work harder. I'm saying work through generations of new laborers. And so when you do that, uh, know who your fourth soil people are. Know what they look like, both biblically and experientially. I think it's one thing to know what fourth soil looks like biblically. You can line it out theologically, and this is what a fourth soil person looks like. But it's a whole different ball game when you have caught one of those cats. And now you see it unfolding in this person's life before your very eyes. Now you know what fourth soil looks like. And so I challenge you to keep looking for that. Keep knowing what fourth soil looks like. And when you get them, love them. L-O-V-E. Have you guys heard me walk through this before? No. Okay. We L, want to. L, give them extraordinary love. O, Give them an example of extraordinary obedience. V, give them extraordinary vision. And E, be an extraordinary example of a disciple of Jesus. So love them, be an example of obedience, give them vision, and be an extraordinary example of a disciple of Jesus, love them. So once you get them, you gotta win them. And if you love them, you will win them. So next, you need to know who your three, your 12, and your 72 are, and then act accordingly. The problem with developing young leaders is their leader gets so diffused with what he's doing that he cannot or she cannot concentrate on the development of the people that are going to get us down the road. Jesus was not distracted. When he had this huge healing party, at night in Peter's home in Mark chapter 1, the next morning gets up before the sun, is spending time with the Father, and they say, hey, everybody's looking for you. And Jesus says, let us go to the towns nearby, for I must preach there also. So he had a broad mass of people that he was ministering to, but he took the 12 with him and you got to focus on those men and women that are going to get you further down the road as far as generation it's really not an issue of playing favorites it's an issue of stewardship you are stewarding the advancement of the gospel and so in doing that you've got to focus on your leader. So know your three, 
know you're 12 and know you're 72 and act accordingly. And then number four is pour your life into the closest based on your capacity and capability. Most of us probably can't do 12 disciples like Jesus did. That is some extraordinarily hard work. I tried one time to have 12 guys following me around everywhere I went, and I think I got to nine, and I think I lost my mind because I was just overwhelmed with the life that we were living together. And so I figured out that I can probably do about five or six really well. So you have to figure out what is your capacity and capability. Narrow those leaders down to that number and pour your life into them. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't love the 72 or the, or the masses. It just means that you focus. You know, the people that call you at 3 o'clock in the morning and you're going to answer the phone. Who are those people? Know them. Uh, select them. Act accordingly. And then the last thing is uh, be a deep well to drink from. Say that again, Chuck. Be a deep well to drink from. You cannot give what you do not have. Abide deeply in Christ. And that's not just prayer and the word. It's, it's perseverance. It's everything. And so uh, I just want to challenge you all this morning to excel still more. But leave with this last thing in your backpack. Uh, I love you. There are probably thousands by now that love you. And you guys are doing a great work for Jesus. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Absolutely. Really appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah.